You've seen those Russian dolls where the smaller ones are stored inside the larger ones? Java's sort of like that. The J2RE is the smallest doll. It's the runtime edition. It only contains the stuff that you need to run simple Java programs. If you're going to write programs too, you'll need the J2SE. That's the standard edition, and it contains the runtime edition. The J2EE is the next step up. It contains all the J2SE, which means it also contains the J2RE. The J2SE, the Java 2 Standard Edition, is the software package that contains the development system. This is the only package that has the compiler and the fundamental classes and the other basic development tools. You already have that installed if you have been writing Java programs. If you don't have the Java compiler installed, don't stop and install it until you've seen this entire movie. You do have some options. Now, if you've been using some other compiler to write programs, the compiler you have installed may or may not be compatible, so I suggest that you go to the Sun website and get yourself a copy of the J2SE. You can either get it as a standalone package, or you can download it with the J2EE. If you do get the standalone version, be sure you get the latest version. J2EE doesn't work with some of the previous versions. I don't want to get into a list of which versions work with what. They're all free, so just install the latest version of everything and you're covered. You can find the latest version of Java 2 Enterprise Edition at the same website. The latest version number may or may not match the latest version number of the standard edition, the compiler, but that doesn't matter. Just get the latest of each and you'll be okay. You can download the whole thing as one huge bundle and install it all at once, or you can download it in four separate pieces. The first of the four parts is the Java 2 Standard Edition. You don't need this again if you already have it installed. It's rather a large piece, and if you have Java already installed, you don't need to download it again. It comes in the complete bundle of all four parts, so you will only need three of the four. A server is required if you're going to be writing and testing software. This is a complete Java server, so you can install it on your system and test your JSP pages and your servlets. It even includes a relational database. The process required to set these things up and use them are included in the sections where they apply. Now, even if you have a web server available to you, such as Apache and Tomcat, you still want to download this one. It's the test bed. You can verify that your pages run on it, so if they quit when you move them to your regular server, you know the problem is somewhere else. There is a fairly large wad of example programs. Nothing is ever so handy as a collection of programs that work and that you can steal from. You're also getting some examples with this course, but go ahead and get these too. There are never too many working examples. This is the smallest of the four parts, but it doesn't mean it's not important. These are HTML pages produced by running the source code of the API through a program named Javadoc. Everything is listed alphabetically and cross-referenced. I took the easy way out. I downloaded the all-in-one package so I could install everything at once. It comes down as an executable program that's more than 100 megabytes in size. It's so big because it contains everything. I have a slow dial-up connection, so I just started my download when I went to bed and got up in the morning and ready to go. The modem was still panting from the exertion. When you start the program running, it does some initialization and presents itself as a wizard. You've seen wizard screens before, so I'll just describe the decisions that you have to make. This is the name of the default directory for everything. You can change it if you want, but at any rate, you should make a note of whatever you use because you will need it later for setting the path. You will need to select the name and password of the administrator. If it's just your local system, you can use the default, which is admin, but in any case, you'll need to make up your own password. And be sure to keep track of these, too. There's nothing more irritating than, well, you know. You will need to specify the administration port number. This is the port number that you'll be using to administer your server. The number 4848 is the default. I suggest you use that unless you have a possible security problem or if it is already being used by something else. But at any rate, 
you need to keep track of that number too. You'll also need to define the ports to be used for web page requests, both normal and secure. These are the default numbers shown here, but any unused port number will work. The numbers you see here are the ones that are used in this course, and don't lose track of these numbers either. You'll have some other choices presented to you. Do you want to register your server? Do you want the installation to automatically update your path setting? The path setting must include the bin directory of the server and the bin directory of your Java compiler. I'll have more to say about path setting in the next lesson.